This is going to be one of the hardest videos that I have filmed because of the events that have happened leading up to today. This video is going to be a sensitive topic, so if anybody is squeamish or sensitive to trauma, sensitive to suffering, please do not watch this video. This video is only here to educate the general public and to inform people of the intakes we have at the rescue here that I run that is foster-based and operated via volunteers and donations, but animals and people's actions will be talked about in today's video. The reason I think why I'm even here talking instead of somewhere else just maybe sitting, relaxing, trying to de-stress is because this is so important of a topic to be talking to you guys about that I have been pretty much preaching and so has many other people and we want people to please listen. We have taken in a litter at the rescue January 17th, 2020. The litter was dubbed the Sailor Moon Litter. Now the Sailor Moon Litter consisted of one Mama Serenity and seven baby Syrians. And those babies consisted of two males and five females. And the names of those are for the males, Kenji and Tuxedo Mask. And the females, we got Venus, Mars, Mercury, Pluto, and Saturn. And out of all those babies there, we did not get the full litter when they were surrendered. So first, let me tell you their story and how we obtained them. There was a Craigslist post online saying that somebody was rehoming baby Syrian pups and they were rehoming them for $5 at first. And then the next post that we saw was they were listing all the hamsters for free and they were trying to get rid of them. And so one of our volunteers stepped in and was saying to the owners, hey, I am a volunteer at Munchie's place. Do you mind surrendering them to me? We had agreed we would take them in because at the time we were doing very well with the previous adoptions in December and a little bit in January. Although this January, February, March is usually one of our slower months, especially when it hits February and March. So I was thinking this is probably going to be like the last emergency major intake because these are very young Syrian pups being listed and rehomed for free. So they agreed and from our understanding that the owner's um, children uh, ended up just having one hamster to begin with, which was the father hamster, and their neighbor was moving and their neighbor had, from our understanding, the Mama Serenity. And so this family ended up taking in Mama Serenity and the, from our understanding, I believe it was two sons. They thought it would be a fun idea to have more of them because they enjoyed them so much. And the way they obtained more was through breeding the male, and the female together. And this resulted in having well over nine plus Syrian pups. We did not obtain them all because by the time we did get the remaining Syrian pups, the previous ones had already been rehomed, but we could see in the photos of the others that were of different colors. And we did add up that, yes, there was probably like maybe two or three that possibly got rehomed to other people at that time. But the family decided to keep the male because they did not understand the outcome of breeding Syrians. And so they ended up with too many and they got overwhelmed and they just wanted them gone. So we were glad we were able to step in but this prompts a really big concern. First concern is that you are breeding pet store hamsters that are not selected by breeding mills, which are the suppliers of big chain pet stores. The breeding mills at least know what type of health and nutrition they have to be feeding their mothers and the pups. So they're on a specific diet at breeding mills. Yes, breeding mills do cut corners, but at least they are supplementing them with the right type of food and not feeding them just whatever they could find. That's another thing where it's versus like say people that are unprofessional and not doing this correctly, they might not have been supplementing the mother with the right nutrients during her pregnancy and the pups soon after they were born. So that can jeopardize both the mom during pregnancy and having her pups and their development in the womb and also the pups growing up. If they don't get the right nutrients, they could be malnourished, they could have defects, they could have problems. So it's a really bad idea to be playing God when you don't know the background and genetics of the hamster. So breeding mills do at least select the mothers, but usually they select them based off of their coat type, but they do have at least a knowledge and a history of some genetics, at least for the code to achieve certain looks of hamsters. And there are certain coat types that you should avoid, especially if you breed two sacks and together, you end up getting a very greasy looking hamster that looks like it's always wet. That is a breeding mistake 
and we have seen them pop up here in pet stores, specifically at the Petco stores, where you tend to see uh, poor Syrians that come in, they look like they're completely greased up. What ended up happening was they just did not pay attention to whoever they were breeding, and they bred little babies that will forever look like they don't look right. Second complication, which I kind of talked about, is the mother. You are risking that mother's health. She is going through pregnancy, just like with any human mother and baby, you're putting that female at risk for complications, not just to her infant that's still growing inside her belly, but herself, her organs. So if you don't know what you're doing for a companion animal that you're supposed to have as a companion only for companionship and you're breeding them, there is something wrong here. If you want more, do it the ethical right way. You do not want these guys to suffer. You do not want birth defects or things that happen afterwards, like say organ failure or anything that could be hereditary and passed down to litters like this. Just don't do it. Please, for the sake of people who rescue, who care for these guys, who want animals to not suffer at the hands and expense of others that just don't know any better, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be selfish. Please don't be selfish. I beg you. Because the next part of this story is not a happy one, okay? Please understand, whenever I talk to you guys, I'm trying to be as humble and as honest and as down to earth as possible for these rescues and intakes. And it gets hard and very discouraging when people don't like the style of videos, don't like what I'm saying or describing. It is very hard to just stay positive and be like, oh, well, you know, I can, I can totally get through this. It's just, please understand. I talk to you guys through the camera and I'm hoping that my emotions and my stories can get to you and you can understand how I feel. So the Syrians estimated for Mama Serenity when we got her was around six months, five to six months is what I estimated her to be at. And her pups, we were told they were supposed to be five weeks of age, but they looked to be around five to eight weeks because they were much bigger and much older looking than five weeks of age. So when we first got them, we ended up having to separate them because they were all mixed together. And if they're over four weeks of age and you still haven't separated them, you have to be on pregnancy watch because they can get pregnant super quickly. So what we ended up doing is separating Kenji and Tuxedo together and then we separated the girls and put them together. The girls got along much better than the boys did. Unfortunately, we had an accident with the boys where Kenji accidentally attacked Tuxedo Mask because Tuxedo Mask ran into the burrow very frantic because I spooked him on accident, prompting in Kenji to accidentally bite him in the face. And thankfully it was a clean wound, nothing much to worry about, it healed super quickly. But then the females started to fight amongst each other and we had to separate them because Mars was actually the bully of the entire group and she was the bigger one. First is Venus, which we believe might have been the runt of the entire litter because she was way, 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 way smaller than any of the Syrian pups, indicating that maybe she was the runt even though there was previous hamsters already rehomed before us. So we just thought that maybe she was the runt. And so when we finally were able to separate them, we separated them around, I want to say six to seven weeks um, into the age we were given at the time, which was five weeks. And so usually you want to keep the Syrian pups up to eight weeks so they can uh, know social cues and they can learn and grow with their siblings. Ethical breeders do practice this and they do preach this too. And so I want to let you guys understand you do not want to be separating the pups that soon. You can can separate them as soon as five weeks. It's not really that recommended. Six weeks is a little bit better, but people are saying, please at least separate them at eight weeks unless they are fighting, unless you do see aggressive behavior that isn't play behavior. But the first major problem of this litter intake was Mama Serenity. She happened to get a UTI. We don't know if she had the UTI before or after, but symptoms definitely arose after when she was consuming way too much water, well over two ounces of water a day, and her sandbox was littered with urine. So we took her in, we found out she had a UTI and she was on antibiotics for 21 days. Yes, I had to administer 12 hours apart for 21 days to get her better, and right now we 
are still watching her. While on antibiotics, she did heal and hardly peed at all, which was great. But now that she's off of antibiotics, we are monitoring her. She seems to be doing okay, but we are still trying to make sure she doesn't go back to having a UTI because it could be something else. Last week is when the major stuff started happening that I was so fearful of the first day we got the Syrians, knowing that these hamsters are pet store hamsters and they were intentionally bred by people who didn't know better because they selfishly wanted to obtain more without understanding. By the way, I want to make a note, unintentional or intentional neglect is still neglect. And in this way, they unintentionally neglected the fact that they put the mother and pups in harm's way and they pushed them, not on our rescue because our rescue offered to take them in, but they pushed them aside because they did not understand the obligation of caring for so many. And yes, that is, that's very bad. We really hope they learn their lesson, but honestly, they possibly might not have because we were the ones that had to take on this. It's not really much of a burden, but with all of the vet bills and the costs of intaking this litter, we got the bad end of the bargain, but we do this because we love them. I get them medical care because I love them. I don't want any living thing to suffer. I don't want things to suffer. I have suffered before. You guys have probably suffered too. There's something that happens with your life. It's absolutely horrible. You don't want anything to go through with such a traumatic experience. And for these guys, they matter to me. So when last week I came in, I saw Saturn, the little girl was wobbling. She had a seizure. And at first I thought she had a stroke, but no, she had a seizure. And so the next morning she was completely fine. Like nothing had happened, but I still took her in to the emergency vets and they found out the seizures were caused by most likely a valve that's connected to her heart because her heart is super enlarged for her age, which she was diagnosed with having heart disease. And I made a post about it on Instagram and I made people aware that this is why you don't breed. You don't intentionally breed unless you know it, the health and bloodline of who you're breeding. If you really wanna get into breeding hamsters, please learn from the experts. Please learn from ethical breeders. Please contact an ethical breeder or see if they have any care guides or links to get you jump started. There is groups on Facebook that are for breeders and people who want to learn how to breed hamsters. And those groups are meant to help guide people who want to get into this hobby to preserve and promote better and healthier hamsters for future generations for everybody to be able to enjoy them because when they suffer we suffer and that is not something that nobody wants to celebrate about and enjoy because it just puts so much hardship on you and the animal that's involved i can't feel their pain i don't know what it feels like to have a seizure to wobble around not knowing what is going on what you're doing how, how your body's reacting you, you have no control when you have a medical crisis like that. So when she was diagnosed, we were told we had to give her two heart medications every 12 hours for the rest of her life. And so Saturn became the first medical foster fail of 2020. She is gonna remain here at the rescue until she ends up passing away peacefully. She's gonna be well cared for. I know what to look out for. My vets are very close by and I trust them with my life. The second incident happened last night and I came in the room to do my health checks and my feeding time at night and everybody was out. And when I went over to Tuxedo Mask and his enclosure, he had his cheeks stuffed full and he was happy and content. And then I go to the very bottom of the rack system, which I keep these guys on, and I go to Kenji's and there Kenji was, curled up in a ball, cold to touch. I thought he had passed. I then pick him up, realize he's still breathing, and performed emergency care for him. Got him on a heating pad, tried blowing air into him, making sure that he's still breathing, tried rubbing, warming him up. He was fighting for about an hour. As we all laid there, keeping an eye on him, making sure to flip him over every couple times, and he passed away. I was devastated because I couldn't help him. And I was also wondering if possibly the heart disease was hereditary and maybe he had it too. Because Saturn, we could not figure out if this was hereditary because she was too small to run tests on. So we were going to notify every adopter 
from now on about her history as well as her mother's history of medical problems here at the rescue just so future adopters can monitor and pay attention to them because we do not know if it's hereditary or if this is just a one-time freak accident for one hamster that was not developed. The way they described Saturn um, and her heart was that it didn't fold correctly and I can't exactly re remember like the words in that sentence but the ones that I held on to was it did not develop correctly, it didn't fold correctly. So now there's going to be a hamster who has to take awful disgusting yucky medication that she doesn't want to take and makes faces at me especially when I give her one of them. She really hates one of the medications for the rest of her life. If you guys were kids and you hated tasting the cherry flavored cold thermoflu type little drink that you had to sip and you hated the flavor of that, think of think of Saturn. She has to taste something disgusting every day, 12 hours apart, rest of her life. So back to Kenji, because at this at this moment I'm trying not to cry because I've already cried so much yesterday and this morning, but Kenji was uh, I want to say he was around 13 to 16 weeks old. He was like not even three months yet. I want to say he was around two months and like three weeks old, estimated, because when the family bred them, they might not have realized that the pups don't leave the nest until they're wiggling and crawling out. And maybe that's when they thought that maybe they were born. I mean, these are people that were inexperienced with what they were doing. And so they might have thought that at five weeks they were born when initially they were born maybe a couple weeks beforehand and did not leave the nest. But estimating at least he was two months and three weeks old. And of course we couldn't get him to the vets in time because we discovered him so late at night like this. And these guys, they go so quickly when they have issues. So Tuxedo Mask was adopted a couple nights ago. He was approved to be adopted. His adopter was just so lovely and wonderful and we were so thrilled because today we were going to go and bring Tuxedo Mask to her. And she had already known about the history of the sibling and the mother, not yet Kenji, because we were just going to tell her this morning about what happened to Kenji, but she understood and she also had a vet set aside for emergencies just like this. And we made sure last night to monitor everybody and to double check Tuxedo Mask before we were to adopt him out. He was fine. He looked at me with his filled cheeks. He kind of gave me this nice cute smile and was happy. And I thought, you're, you're going to be loved by this person. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your life. Today, I go in and... I called to Tuxedo because he usually comes out. He's been very good lately about coming out when called. And he didn't come. So what I did was I lifted up both hides that usually he is in and I didn't see him. And so the one hide I knew exactly where he was in, I digged around in because it just, he wasn't making any movements. And my heart sank when I realized that nothing was moving when I was opening up the hides and I knew he was there and I touched him. And he was cold and not responsive, but he was still breathing. I immediately panicked, called my vets. They said, come on in, come on in right now. And he was in the emergency room at the vets, trying to get stabilized. I had to break it to the adopter that I am so sorry. We just had an emergency for Tuxedo. I cannot meet you today, but I am going to give you all the updates I possibly can when I get them. And while I was at the vets, what they said to me was his glucose levels were dangerously low. And so at first we were talking about the food and asking about his diet and what he was on. And it made me question it a little bit because none of the other hamsters except for the Syrian litter hamster intake was having symptoms. Nobody was having symptoms. So if it was the food, everybody else should be exhibiting similar symptoms and they weren't. So they thought that maybe it was the food. At this time, we do have a lot of donations and food that were given around the holidays and we are slowly using it up. But right now we are using up the VitaCraft um, Vita Smart blend mixed in with the Power of Five lap blocks from uh, PetSmart. And so I, I I, honestly don't think it was food. They said that that's the first thought that came into their heads. But knowing the history of the mother and knowing the history of Saturn, who is still alive and in our care, they said it is possible it could be something else and there's an underlying cause that could be causing this. So they said that they will update me and I had to go home and wait and wait 
and I finally heard back from them. This is what happened. Tuxedo Mask had seizures, a lot of seizures when he was there, when they were trying to stabilize him. I was not told this right away when they got the glucose levels. I kind of wish they told me because that way I, I would be at least covered in knowing that most likely this is exactly related to how Saturn was when I found her. He had a bunch of seizures and his heart stopped twice. And he was revived twice by the staff there. But the third time it happened, they let him go. <laughs> they let him go because it, it just it, it wasn't fair to him he was suffering and he might if this is hereditary if there's anything horribly wrong with him he don't want to be living like this when Saturn bounced back the next morning it was like a miracle but when I saw Kenji and now Tuxedo they were beyond being helped because they were not wobbling around. They were literally not responsive when I touched them. What we're doing right now that I'm waiting patiently for a callback is a necropsy. And the necropsy is going to tell me if his heart was enlarged or if there was anything else in his system that could indicate there was a problem. If we need to, we will send test results to the labs to see if there could have been something else that caused this internally. They told me when they were gonna perform the necropsy on him, that they were gonna be gentle. So don't worry everybody, this is because we need to find out what is going on with this litter, if it's hereditary or not. And I just want them to be safe. I'm glad they're in my care so that I can get them seen, but we must find out what is going on. So I opted for a necropsy for Tuxedo because he's going to, even though he's not here, help his siblings out to find out what is wrong. It is horrifying at the rescue when you find them like this because you can't always help them. You, you can't just make, wave your magic wand and make things better. But I know you guys are going to say, well, at least you were there for him. And that, that, that is good. That is good. But I do not want anybody to think that this is easy, that what I'm doing is easy. This rescue is a very small foster-based rescue. I still am not considered very big. My volunteers are doing wonderful jobs and they're helping me. But this is still like a very small operation. And, you know, I will recoup. But I also want people to understand this is hard. This is absolutely hard. And I, I know you guys are like, wow, she's saving so many. And look how many got rehomed. And that, those are amazing numbers. Those are incredible. Those are for, for small animals. That is great. And I don't want to discourage anybody, but you must have a strong will in order to rescue. So if anybody out there needs encouragement, what I end up doing for every animal that usually passes in our care, especially of the past year where we lost nine last year. Out of those hamsters, gerbils, or mice, I say to myself, this animal gave up their life so another one can take its place. They are saying, hey, I'm passing the torch off to you so that I can go, or my volunteers can go, or anybody out there can go and rescue another that might be in a bad situation, or might be in a situation where they're about to be homeless and need to be rehomed ASAP. Thankfully, the rescue has grown the way it has, and people are actually contacting us instead of releasing them on Craigslist to find room and to find proper care and homes for them. People do care. When people contact us for intakes, it shows they care. It does. There hasn't really been anybody yet at the rescue who has surrendered that has shown me that they are absolutely neglectful and awful individuals. It's just they might not have been properly educated and they might not understand exactly what they're doing. There's so many wonderful things at the rescue, but there's also so many horrible things that I see all the time that I want to share with you guys, but to educate you guys, not to just not to just do this for entertainment value. Because the more somebody's aware of what is going on and what's happening, the better we can be as a community to fix this. So at the end of the day, I hope you guys understand we are having animal companionship because we seek to find friendship and love and trust in another being, whether it be another human or another animal companion, but we should be doing so as companions. If you do not want to get into ethical hamster breeding and if you don't know what you're doing but want to obtain more, please 
look at rescuing. Please look at ethical breeders in your area. Please call around to the pet shops to ask about their adoption program, not the animals that are being sold in the stores, but for animals that unfortunately had medical issues, behavioral issues, maybe they got returned or surrendered to the pet store and they are rehoming them for a small fee. While I encourage you guys not to be buying directly from a big chain pet store, sometimes in your area, especially in different countries you cannot find hamsters gerbils or mice anywhere except for at a local pet store and that's completely understandable but if you have the option to look elsewhere at shelters rescues breeders please do please ask around please join hamster groups please ask for information there everybody is so willing to give you information and please also again consider not breeding directly yourself before i go i will tell you how the necropsy went because I'm still waiting for an update. So I'll pause the video here and I'll be with you momentarily on the results. Hello everyone, I am back. I have the results. The first thing she observed was there was two speckles on the liver. This was not serious at all. Tuxedo had a mildly enlarged heart, which prompted the vet to say that most likely this is hereditary and most likely the remaining pups at the rescue need to be monitored for two months. The reason why they could be monitored for two months and then rehomed is even though this is now considered to be hereditary, that means yes, they do have it in their system. This is passed down genetically, but it doesn't mean that they would, if they're a healthy pup, most likely exhibit symptoms or they may get it when they are older, when they have lived a very thrilling and fulfilling life, but then may pass due to complications knowing the history. But as of right now, we could have a hamster, say for instance, Mars, Mercury, or Pluto that may suddenly have a heart disease, heart failure, seizures, and the end of passing. We just do not know. So this was all preventable if people did not selfishly breed. And I have this weird feeling too, like it is Mama Serenity that is possibly has that gene because we do not know what their father looked like because they kept their father, but the father might have been passed down with this gene for heart disease. But I am kind of worried about Serenity, like I said previously, because of the water intake issue in the UTI. And she did lose a bunch of weight during that time. I forgot to make a mention of that. When we first discovered the UTI, she lost almost 40 grams but then on treatment she gained that weight back which was great but I am a little bit worried about her I haven't weighed her for about a week now usually I do weekly um, weigh-ins so crossing fingers everything is okay with her but this bottom line is hereditary heart disease in hamsters I need to go now and go and get tuxedo mask from the vets and bring him back home so I can eventually bury him with his brother, Kenji. And I'm going to bury them most likely together. They're gonna to be in their own separate boxes, but they're gonna be buried side by side. And I'll see you guys around in a future video.